Hi, my name is Justin Richardson and I'm with Direct Colors. Are you thinking of doing an acid stain project? Maybe you've got a few questions about how to get through the process. I want to take just a few moments to talk to you about acid stain, uh, what it is, um, ways to prepare your concrete, uh, ways to apply the acid stain, and then coming back and sealing it, and if you're inside, uh, doing a floor finish or a wax. Uh, so coming back to the start, what is acid stain? Acid stain is really just a blend of, of materials uh, that uh, chemically react with the minerals in your concrete and force those minerals to change colors, which is a very different conversation uh, than any other colorant out there really, which is pigment driven. Uh, you spray the pigments onto the concrete and you seal those pigments down and that's where your color comes from. So acid stain forcing the minerals to change is very different and, and one of the nice things about it or one of the things that people like about it is the permanence of color. Another thing that people like about it is the marbleization. It's also one of the original ways to take an ordinary gray slab and make it look like marble. Um, there's about 10 colors of acid stain to work with, so you can be as dramatic as you want or as subdued you want. If you want a modern look, you can do a modern look. If you want rustic, you can certainly do a rustic look and everything in between. Uh, but um, from there, that's, that's sort of an overview of what acid stain is or, or how it works. Uh, and now let's get into the, the preparation for acid staining. Um, preparation, you want your concrete to be clean. You don't want to have any oil spots, grease spots, anything that could cause it to sheet away or reflect the stain out. Um, you want to make sure that it's debris free. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got a certain level of porosity. Ideally, somewhere around a 200 grit or a 300 grit is a good uh, finish for your concrete. Uh, you rub your hand across it, it feels like a light suede or something like that. Now, if it's a little slicker, you can still get color, but what you don't want is that the concrete to be so slick that you can't get water to penetrate it. Because if water can't soak in, the stain can't soak in. And if that happens, you're going to get a diminished color return. So uh, it, we've got products that can help you etch a floor if you need to etch or open up a floor. You could sand a floor, whatever you need to do. But make sure your preparation is done well and complete because that is 75% of the success here. Um, once your floor is prepped, uh, and it's ready to go, uh, you, could, you could start applying your stain. Uh, the concrete could be wet, it could be dry, it could be damp. Uh, there's a lot of schools of thought, and I don't think anybody's wrong. There's a lot of art, artistry involved in it. But um, when you start applying your stain, there's only one hard, fast rule to know, and that is that darker colors will override lighter colors, and lighter colors will not override darker colors. Uh, so that's, that's the only important rule. The rest of it, you get to have a lot of fun in your application. Uh, what I'll recommend a lot of people do is start with your lighter color. Go ahead and cover the floor with it. Circular motions, figure eight motions, whatever you want to do. And if you're going for a dramatic effect where you have darker, darker low lights, uh, come back over it with a darker stain. Spray that where and how you want to see it. Spray it a little bit lighter and you can see those undertones of the lighter color come through the dark spray it a little bit heavier and it'll totally override it. If you go through our photo galleries, galleries you'll see some examples of, of a lot of different looks, but you'll see exactly what I'm talking about as well. Uh, so once you get your floor covered with acid stain uh, with your initial coat, uh, be sure you're wearing some spike shoes uh, because you don't want to walk back out on that stain that's been sprayed down in regular shoes or boots because you do risk printing uh, that stain. Uh, it's very hypersensitive to pressure, so look into getting some spike shoes or something along those lines so you don't print your stain work. Um, you go out, spray your accents down, however you want to do that creatively. You could add as many colors as you want into it to make it, make it really dramatic, or you could go single color. So now that your stain is down, and it's, it's where you want to have it, uh, and how you want to have it, you're going to let that react. It needs some time to soak into the concrete. It needs some time to chemically react. Some concrete stains really quick. Some concrete takes hours to stain. That's all about the mix design and the concrete, and no two slabs are the same. So be patient, kind of keep an eye on it, babysit it a little bit, and uh, just kind of watch for those colors that you're looking and expecting to come through. 
when you start seeing those colors, which could be anywhere from three to four hours, six to eight hours, sometimes eight to 10 hours if you're trying to do deep, deep brown or black, um, uh, just let it sit, let it do what it needs to do. Um, once you see the colors, uh, then it's gonna be time to neutralize that stain. And the neutralizing is basically a sodium bicarbonate or a baking soda or ammonia and mixed with water. Uh, it's two or three tablespoons of baking soda to a gallon of water, or it could be um, uh, a half a cup or even less, a quarter of a cup of ammonia to a gallon of water. Um, mix that up, spray it over the entire acid stained surface that's going to render the acid inert and uh, basically kill it. At that point, you don't necessarily have to wear your spike shoes, although I always recommend it because if you don't get it completely neutralized, you don't want to be walking on it. But um, soak it till you get a wet look. Let that neutralizer sit on the surface for 15, 20 minutes so it can soak down into the concrete and get to where the acid stain has soaked into. After 15 or 20 minutes, you're gonna have some residue that you gotta scrub off there. The residue is concrete dust from the etching process. It's mineral salts that were in the acid stain that have, that have deposited and dried on the surface. Um, that's all expected and you do need to scrub that off. Uh, we've got a concrete cleaner and degreaser that'll help you get that cleaned up really good. We've got a scrub brush that'll help you scrub that off. Uh, but uh, at the end of your cleanup, you should be able to run your hand across that concrete just with mild pressure and not get any color on your skin. If you're seeing color come off, you need to keep cleaning. Uh, don't shortcut that because if you do, it'll, it'll bite you in the end whenever you put sealer on it. So. So you've, you've prepped, you've acid stained, you've got your colors laid out just the way you want. Uh, it's set, it's neutralized, you've got beautiful marbleization or whatever it is you were going for. Now uh, you've neutralized and you're ready to clean it up. You've scrubbed it all up, use a shop vac, whatever you gotta do to get that liquid up and out of there. Uh, now it's time to just let the surface dry. And you want it to dry completely before you come in and start putting any sealer on it. As that dries, it is going to look a little more faded. It's not gonna look as interesting. It's gonna look very different. A lot of times people wind up putting more acid stain on it thinking that it's too light, and that could be a mistake. Um, so uh, be careful about that. And if you're curious about whether you're happy with the color, just get it wet with some water because that's gonna emulate what it does when you seal it, and that'll let you know. But once it's good and dry, now it's time to apply a sealer. We've got a couple of different sealers. Um, our most popular for these applications would be our acrylic sealers. And within acrylic sealers, we've got solvent-based and we've got water-based. We've got satin and we've got gloss. Now, why would somebody choose solvent or, or water? Um, the solvent-based sealer tends to darken the concrete and bring out a lot of deep color tones that you don't really get with the water-based. So that's one of the things that people enjoy about a solvent. Um, if you're exterior, I'll recommend a solvent because they tend to perform better exterior. But speaking strictly of color, uh, you're, if you're looking for a deep, rich color pop, consider the solvent. Um, if that's not quite as important, let's say the odor is important because the solvent does have a pretty strong chemical odor. If that's an issue for you, look to the water base. You're going to lose a little bit of the color pop. Still going to be very interesting, still going to be very pretty. It just won't have those deep, deep, rich tones. Um, but the water base is a little bit more friendly and low ventilation interior spaces. If you're living in the space, that's a good thing to, uh, to consider. Um, sealer, you're going to put two thin coats down. Uh, start with your first coat of sealer. You're either going to spray it on or you're going to roll it on. Uh, you do want to keep these nice and thin. Uh, and uh, once you get your first coat down, if it's a solvent base, you're going to let it sit six or eight hours. Then you're going to come back and you're going to put your second thin coat down. If it's water-based, you're going to give it about 12 hours in between coats. Um, from there, uh, once you get two coats down of sealer, uh, if you're inside, and this is only for interior, then you're going to want to put a floor finish down or a floor wax. And the floor wax is very much like the, the water-based sealer in that you, you put a thin coat down, you let it sit for 12 to 24 hours, depending on temperatures, and then uh, after that period of time, you'll come back and put a second coat down. By the time you get your second coat down and it dries, you're done. And you've got a beautiful floor 
and uh, you'll be able to enjoy that floor for a very long time. Just do basic upkeep on the floor finish. If it's interior, if it's exterior, keep an eye on your sealer. Make sure your sealer's doing well. Some indicators that uh, your sealer's starting to wear out is the stain can start to look a little bit faded. A lot of times people will misinterpret that to think that the stain is uh, wearing out or UV is starting to lighten it. Most often uh, that is just more of a sign that the sealer is worn out and the acid uh, stain surface is exposed. Once you put a fresh coat of sealer on there, it darkens, color pops back up, and you're good to go for another two, three, four years. So hopefully that gives you some insight on what acid stain is, how to prepare for it, and uh, how to put it down, and then certainly what it's like to come back and seal and put a finish on there. It really is not a complicated process. It's, um, it's specific. We have some great information and how-to on our website at www.directcolors.com. And if you have other questions that go a little deeper than the, than the light version that I just gave you, uh, you could certainly call us. Uh, we've got a tremendous technical staff here that will help you get through your project. Our phone number is 405-275-6657. Uh, we're here Monday through Friday, 830 to 530. Uh, most days, every day of the week, except for holidays, of course. But anyway, I hope you've um, gained a little something, a little insight from this talk, and uh, I hope you have fun using acid stain, be fearless, and enjoy the process. Thanks so much, and have a great day.